Hello, everyone. I think we, can, we, we should start already because the first session was a little bit out of the time, but to keep the agenda on, in frame, we will start. So I welcome you in the session, a manager or a leader, how to define your leadership stand. But before we start, I wanted to thank the Drupal community and to each one of you for the opportunity to stay here and deliver a speech. You know, like one small part of me still doesn't believe that it's happening to me, standing here and speaking an international event. So let's give a huge round of applause to Drupal community and each one of us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so my name is Marina and I come from Russia. Uh, I'm working for, um, as organizational development manager in the Drupal shop from Siberia. And it will matter a little uh, in the further part of my presentation. But before we move to the session, uh, to the content of the session, I wanted to introduce myself a little for you to have an idea why this topic is, um, matters to me and what relevant experience I have to speak about this topic. So during my professional life, I've been to many amazing teams and I was honored to lead some of them. And through each and every of those experiences, I somehow reinvented myself to understand what kind of leader is needed to fulfill the project's goal and to help the, to develop the skills of the team members. And I've come to the conclusion that the main difference between a manager and a, and a leader is that a manager distributes tasks. And the members of the manager's team usually are responsible for some functions realizations. On the other hand, a leader is someone who strives to unleash the potential of his or her team members in order to allow them to achieve their personal goals while achieving the project's goal. And therefore, it creates much stronger commitment towards the project, and it creates uh, the bigger picture for the team members and each and every of their actions. And that kind of leadership we're gonna speak today, that kind of leadership that I really value, and I think it um, really matters to have such kind of leaders in the company and uh, within each and every team. So, uh, you know, I'm not that motivational speaker, so I'm not gonna stay here, stay here and say like, you cannot do this, you go for it and so on. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not like this yet. Uh, maybe one day I will become that inspirational speaker, but now I'm just the person who loves structuring things and today I'm gonna present to you my own approach of finding the leadership stand, of understanding who you are, of some kind of self-discovery path that will lead you to understanding what kind of leader you can be, what kind of leader you are now. So that is just my approach that I used myself and I uh, hope it will be also relevant to you. So what we are gonna talk today? First, we will define the leadership because that is a term we're gonna be talking a lot today, but it's good to have an idea what is this because now many people consider it as different things. Then we will discuss a golden circle model which will help us to understand why we do what you do. And then we go even deeper on this to understand what values stand behind our will to do something. Um, further, we finalize those two parts with the influential leadership concept, and we will uh, finish our session with the leadership stand defini uh, definition and creation. Uh, but you know, uh, <laughs> adults usually don't learn new skills before practicing it. So I prepared a couple of exercises to you to be even more engaged in the process. Those exercises are totally individual, so you won't need to interact with others. <laughs> and uh, also, if you don't want to participate, it's also totally fine. So um, for me, both versions will work. If you want to participate, go for it. If you don't want you more into listening, it's also fine. But I believe that uh, in our nowadays life, uh, we don't really have time to stop and think what we do, why we do it, who we are, and what persons we want to be. But now I have one hour and I want to grant it to you. So use it as efficient as you can. Take anything you, you want and you can out of this one hour. And I promise exercise won't be very difficult, but they will help you to leave the session with a tangible result. And also, <clears throat> the leadership uh, topic is kind of sensitive one, and I believe that uh, it will be more, uh, the result will be more efficient from the session if you will demonstrate the growth mindset during it. So has anyone heard about the concept of a fixed and growth mindset, maybe? 
Okay, great. So the main difference between people with fixed and growth mindsets is that people with fixed mindset perceive challenges as a threat and try to avoid it. And on the other hand, people with growth mindset perceive challenges as opportunity. Opportunity to meet new people, to get out of the comfort zone, or to uh, develop new skills or something like this. And the other difference is that people with fixed mindset usually behave in the way they know all they got to know. And people with growth mindset, they tend to learn from others. Maybe sometimes even not from books and some you know, uh, other sources, but from talking to people and sharing, exchanging experience. And I believe that uh, this growth mindset won't deprive you of possibly working solutions. It leaves you with a choice whether first to try something new and then decide whether it fits you or no. And I believe that this kind of approach will be much more efficient during the talk about leadership and self-discovery. Well, so without further ado, let's go to the content of the session. So please, raise your hand those who can call him or herself a leader right now. Do we have leaders in the room? Great. Thank you. Um, you know, it's kind of weird, but I've never seen an audience when all the people rose hands on this question. And I believe that there may be two reasons for this. The first reason is that leadership became a little bit of a buzzword today. So leadership, 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 leadership is everywhere. Everyone can be a leader, can call him or herself a leader, but no one really knows who is a leader. And the other reason is, uh, uh, different from the first one, but I believe even more relevant today. Uh, this reason is that people now sometimes perceive leadership as something bigger, beyond ordinary people, as something that we need to deserve one day to be called a leader, and so on. And uh, people think that leadership is kind of acts of bravery, changing the world entirely, and every day working on yourself, doing some big feats and other things like this. But um, in his TED talk, Drew Dudley said that uh, having in mind that leadership is something beyond us, we therefore create for us an excuse not to expect leadership behavior from ourselves and from people around us. So we say that, no, leadership is too big, it's not for me, and therefore we don't demonstrate this kind of behavior. But on the other hand, there is a concept of everyday leadership, where leadership is perceived as small things we can do every day to change other people's lives to the better. And, you know, I've also been kind of trapped in this uh, situation, in this, in this perceiving of leadership, uh, until one story happened to me. It was a couple of years ago, I was the team leader of a project team organizing the educational event. And I need to mention that it was a volunteering event, so all we got from it was our self-development and experience. And uh, that was two or three weeks before the project realization, almost anything wasn't ready. And I felt like I need to push my team towards goals achievement somehow. Uh, of course, I could have screamed at them, I could have punished them, but it would work, but that wasn't the result I wanted. I wanted them to remember about the great things they wanted to achieve. I wanted them to remember why they joined this project and re-inspire them again by, the, uh, by this project realization. So I didn't say to them that I'm mad at them. I didn't say that I'm worried about the project because I wasn't. I did this project before and I knew how to fix it, but I want them to get this experience they could get out of this project. And I just said to them that I'm very sad and disappointed looking how they gave up on their dreams. And that was you know, the key message of my one hour long speech. And as I've already told you, I'm not good at motivational speaking. So when I was going home, I was shaking, and I was really nervous because I didn't know whether it helped or it even made it all worse. <laughs> but by the time I got home, I received the, this big message of one of my girls, uh, of my team, where she said that actually during many years uh, we know each other, she perceived me as a role model in professional area for her. And so when I said uh, to her that I'm disappointed in her, she felt like she betrayed herself. And she felt like she didn't become the better version of herself she wanted to become. And uh, from that moment, she promised me that she would do anything it takes to contribute to the project, to make it really great. And she was the most efficient member of the team from that point of time. But you know what was the first time when I've read this message? I, I, I thought, a role model? Me? No. No. Role model is something big. 
role model is a leader, is something great, is some, someone who other people want to be look like, but I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm just an ordinary person. I'm not, I cannot be someone else's role model. And uh, then I started to think more about this. I, I thought it over and over again, and I understood that each time we had conversation with this girl, each project we realized together, all the ordinary and trivial conversations that was to me, they were somehow special to her. And that came, uh, led me to the conclusion that each time we talk to other people, we might change someone else's life, but we even don't know about it sometimes. So maybe you also have people who influenced your life very much, who changed the way you perceive things. Do you have such people in your, among your friends or family? Yeah, great, thank you. Who have you told them, uh, them that they changed your life? See? Why not? <laughs> and that's why we don't, uh, because we don't pay enough attention to this kind of um, uh, things, to this kind of leadership. We used to underestimate this. But actually, we do change other people's lives all the time. And if we want to really become leaders, we need to make it more consciously. Because I personally believe that we cannot lead anyone anywhere before knowing where we're going ourselves. And that is a goal of our session, to understand what kind of leaders we are and to, to lead with fully uh, transparent attitude towards other people. Yeah, and the first guy to, talk, uh, to help us with uh, this self-discovery process is Simon Sinek. And he came up with the idea of golden circle model. Uh, do, did you hear about it, maybe? Oh, okay, good. So uh, he said that there are three main questions you should answer be before starting doing something. And these questions are why, how, and what. So in terms of doing something new, what do you think is the most important? Why are you doing things? How are you going to achieve it? Or what are you going to do, actually? So who is for why? And who is for what? And who is for uh, how? Good. And I'm sorry to say this, but you all are mistaken. Sorry. Uh, actually, he said that to use this model, you need to apply to these two main principles. And the first principle is that you should answer all three of them. And you should have them in balance. Because if you know what you do, but you don't know why you do it, you don't have this connection between your personality and your activity. And therefore, people cannot understand who you are out of what you do. And on the other hand, if you know why you do things, but you don't do anything. Anyway, uh, it, you are somehow uh, closed from the outside world um, and you close uh, your personality from other people. So this is how this model looks like, because the second principle you should apply to this model is that you need to always start from why. And in this term, uh, those who rose hands on the why part were uh, partially right, because that is the first touch point with this model. First you ask yourself why, and then go further and further. And when you ask, answer why you do what you do, the means of achieving this, your house, will be much more easier to find. And also uh, what it should look like also will appear uh, very easy. Uh, so you should always have the clarity of why first, where why is your set of fundamental beliefs, it's your core life values. And then you need to have the, uh, the discipline of how, where how is a concrete actual steps to realize your why. And finally, you need to have the consistency of what, where what uh, is a concrete, tangible manifestation of your why in the real world. And you know, when you will ans ask this question why to yourself at the first time, it may be a little bit difficult to answer it uh, very easy. But if you will make it a habit, so each time you do something new, you will answer the, uh, ask yourself this question, it will Next time it will come to your mind automatically and the answer will come easier and easier from time to time because uh, your whole life will be transformed to a more conscious one. So anytime you will do something new, you will know exactly why you do this. And having this in mind, your personality will be more shaped and solid. But sometimes people uh, struggle as answering this question or even they understand that they don't know why they do what they do and they don't actually want to do this anymore after asking this question. And for this kind of situation, I've also prepared to you two more questions that can provide you with some insights about what you can be passionate about. And so the first question is, what would you do if you have unlimited amount of money? 
So if you don't know what uh, you want to do, ask yourself this question. So imagine that money are not relevant in this world anymore, so you are free to do anything you want. And so make up the list of things. And during this day or during another day to re refresh your mind a little, ask yourself a second question is, what would you do even if you are not paid for it? What you are so passionate about that you would do it even for free? And so after coming up with a list of things, uh, of answers on to those questions, uh, imagine yourself doing this, action, this, doing this activities and ask yourself a question, what it makes you feel? What is similar in all these activities you mentioned? And why is it so important for you to do this? Of course, it may be not the direct answer on the question what you should do, but it will be at least uh, some tips, some clues to you to understand your further career step or further professional development step. Well, uh, as I said, your why is a set of your fundamental beliefs, is a set of your life values. So let's go a little bit uh, deeper on this and understand what stands behind your why, what life values drive your why and make you do what you do. What actually a life value is. It is, you know, your like guiding compass, your, uh, how to say, uh, value is your fundamental belief that drives behavior, that drives behavior. And this is a very important notice. So values drive your behavior. And therefore, having understood what your value in this life, your behavioral characteristics will be much more clear even to you. You will understand why you got angry on, on one particular situation and why another situation made you happy because you will know what, may, what the reasons that uh, lay uh, behind this, behind any emotions, any decision you take. And uh, here comes the first exercise I prepared to you. And for all you, all you will need is like a maybe notebook and a pen or your like mobile device when you can uh, draw or read or, or write. And the first task is very easy, is to draw a circle. So very easy exercise. And those who want to participate, just <laughs> draw a circle. It can be not that round, but whatever it is. Yeah, so the next one is also a very easy one is to divide the circle into six sectors. So just three lines will help you with this step. And when you are done, just look up and I will see that we can move further. Okay, the next part will be a little bit more difficult. Uh, and this is, uh, you should put your life values into the section. So one value at a section. For example, section one, freedom, section two, love, section three, something else you value in this life. And while you do this, uh, try to be as specific as you can because uh, a life value is something indivisible, is something solid, So, uh, uh, and it should be very understandable and clear. For example, if you at first sight think that your life value is money, then think uh, more about what you need this money for. Maybe you will need, not need money to travel and therefore your true life value will be not the money itself but the freedom this money can buy. Or, for example, you need money to help your grandparents and think why it is so important for you to help your grandparents. Maybe your true life value will be the quality time with your family or to sense the sense of belonging to community or something like this. And uh, you should put this in the way you will understand what you, what you mean by this truly. So it should be really something indivisible. So when you ask yourself a further question on it, it should be like at the very, very bottom. And yeah, we have a couple of minutes to this, for this exercise.
Ah, I forgot to mention. <laughs> if you have more values than six, it is also fine. Just divide the circle into more sections and just put your values there. Or if you have less, it's also fine. Just leave the blank sectors. It's, it's fine. But to me personally, if having too many values, it's very hard to remember and very hard to follow. <laughs> Therefore, if you have less, it, it, at some point it's better. But if you by now have more than six, fine. Put it as it, as it, it, as it feels right to you. It's also fine. I, are you sure that you went as, as deep as you, as you could? Good. I mean, in, in discovering like, what, what stands behind this value. Probably, for now it works. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Who needs more time? Oh, okay. Uh, good. So the final part of the exercise will be to think about your everyday life and understand to which extent you live your life values in your everyday life. So go sector by sector and color the part of the sector to which extent you think you live this value and put a percentage that feels correctly. So for example, if you put your life values freedom, but you have you know, a mortgage, two kids and fixed scheduled job, that maybe you're not that free as you wished to be. <laughs> and then you should put some smaller percentage, for example, like 10 or 20%. Or you put uh, your value as like, spending quality time with your family and you do spend each Sunday uh, having dinner with your family. It's amazing time of sharing experiences and so on. Then you put a bigger percentage, like 80, 90, even 100. Or, for example, you spend a lot of time with your family, but you cannot honestly say that time is quality, so put the smaller percentage, like 50, 60, like whatever it is. And try to go one sector by one, not all at once. And so when, once you finished with one value, move to another one. And then color uh, the parts of the sector to which extent you leave this value in your everyday life. And when you finish, just look up to and we will move further. Okay, I see some people still painting. Mm -hmm. So do we have people who live all the life values to more than 80%? Great! <laughs> You're doing great, it's amazing. Do we have people who leave all the values to less than 50%? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm totally with you guys because when I first did this exercise, I, I also draw the circle and I put my values and I looked at it and I said, well, I have really cool values. My values looked so inspiring and so great to me, I felt so empowered by the values I put uh, on the list. And then we needed also to color the parts of the section and I was really doing this one by one. And then finally, I looked at the whole picture I drew, I drew and, and I understood that I don't really leave any of my cool values. <laughs> and that was, you know, I, I was in panic. It was like a thunder in my head. I couldn't do anything. I felt paralyzed. I felt like I really messed up. I felt like I screwed my life or I lived someone else's life. I didn't know what to do. It was so scary. And in this kind of agony, my brain started to function. And I understood that there are maybe two reasons for this kind of situation. And the first reason is that maybe I put the wrong values. Maybe it's actually not the values uh, I have in my life. But then I looked again at this and understood that no. These are the things I care a lot and I want to live them 100% in my everyday life. So the other reason that was left is that I do something wrong <laughs> in my life and I need to change it somehow or I need to change the perception of it. 
But back then, when I was looking at my, my drawing, it, it, seemed, it seemed impossible. It seemed impossible to include my life values into my life because one of my values I put that time, it was freedom, as I said, but I was living in Moscow at the time, working on very important projects, so I couldn't just quit. <laughs> I was working 24-7, uh, and uh, it wasn't impossible even to have like a short break. And it felt like when I knew that my life value is freedom, but I don't, don't really leave this, from that moment I felt like I'm trapped in the situation. And I didn't see the way out of it. But then I got myself together, I went to my boss that time, and I said, you know, this kind of situation I have, I'm struggling with this, so can we make something up to, to solve it? And surprisingly, she was very open and she helped me to, to create a plan of how I can like, you know, have some rest and feel more free in my job uh, responsibilities at time. And that was a very important moment for me to understand that I actually can change my life according to my values. And from that moment, step by step, I rethink, uh, I was rethinking all my life to fit my values. And now I can say that it's possible. <laughs> so those people who put a smaller percentage of values don't get upset as I did that time. It's great that you know it now. It is your starting point from there. You can go just up and, and better. So it is really possible by small steps changing your life and make it fit your life values. And that will make you really happy and fulfilled personality. So let's move further to some more positive <laughs> things and it's influential leadership. So as I promised to you, we will finalize those two parts, uh, uh, the Simon Sinek Golden Circle and the values assessment with the influential leadership part. And um, Again, uh, as Simon Sinek says, that what makes you influential leader? It's connecting your why with your what. And why it is so? Because your why is your personal values, is actually who you are and what drives your behavior. And if you uh, will be able to connect your why with your what, and your what is your activity and anything you do, you will be able to surround yourself with like-minded people. So people will understand who you are out of what you do. It is, will, will be very easy for them to understand who you are and whether they want to join you or no. And uh, having uh, such people around you will help you to create much stronger team, much more committed teams. Because again, as Simon says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And if you will be able to translate, transmit this why to external world, you will shape this community around you with people who have shared values. And if you will have such people in your team or your company, you will do much more extraordinary things uh, in comparison if you will just unite people by uh, you know, some material things like salary or something like this. People who are driven by their core life values are more uh, committed and more bonded in these terms. So try to base all of your activities, your jobs, your hobbies on your life value, uh, life values, and that will help you to do first steps towards influential leadership. But how I was looking for my why? You know, before presenting all these exercises to you, I did them myself, and uh, it used to be very easy for me to answer myself a question why I do what I do. But a couple of years ago, I was lost a little in my professional life and I asked myself why I do what I do, why am I here? And the answer didn't appear and I was like, what? You know, <laughs> what's going on? It usually was very easy for me to understand why I do what I do, but that time it wasn't. So I wasn't sure whether to quit my job or no, and I, but I understood that just quitting is an easy way and uh, I was struggling for several months to understand why I should stay, why am I here, what, what should I do further, and so on. And that was kind of a tough month for me, but that was good because that was the first time I thought of creating this kind of system of understanding yourself. So it was good in, this, in these terms. Uh, so what I did, I was analyzing all the activities I had that I enjoyed doing. It was my uh, parts of my job that I loved doing, it was my weird hobbies, and you know I have weird hobbies. I started with baking muffins, and you know, it sounds pretty fine, like a girl bakes muffins, what's wrong with it? But I was baking like 400 of them <laughs> at a time, <laughs> and not just once, you know? <laughs> then I moved to knitting, and I was knitting hats, and I still have this big bag of hats in my place, I don't know why I need so many hats. And then it was gardening, 
I'm sorry for sharing all this random stuff, but you know, I'm kind of obsessed person <laughs> in these terms, so I'm really engaged in activity I'm, I'm doing to like 100%. So I also analyzed my previous project and jobs, so uh, this conference that I was sharing uh, with you in the beginning, I created the idea of this event, and then uh, realized the event, and I was really, uh, uh, how to say, excited when 200 people came to this conference and it was really a moment when I felt like I did something really great that I felt special. So I analyzed these moments that make me really happy and tried to find out what is similar in all of these, what they have in common in order to find out what is really important to me. And the conclusion I had sounds really simple now, but at the time it was just mind blowing. I understood that I'm really driven by the moment of creation. So when I do something out of nothing or I structure things that was, were in chaos before, that really makes me inspired. And this small realization about myself, this why I had, helped me to understand how I can change my work, uh, my responsibilities to make, to make them fit uh, my inspiration because I knew that if I do this, I will be much more efficient in, in my job and, and in my life because if people do what they really love doing, they are much better in, in, in this. And from that time, I tried to change my um, career path. I, tr I tried to change what I did and my, uh, like, uh, my responsibilities towards the things that I love doing. And as I tell, told you in the beginning, so I'm uh, in charge of organizational development, which literally means that I create business processes that never existed before, or I structure business processes that are not working properly. So this small thought I had a couple of years ago led me towards doing what I really love. And you can do as well. And that's why you, you will also link uh, why you do with what you do. And so it's very, very possible. Well. So now we have all the necessary information to try to come up with our leadership stand. No, but what is leadership stand in the first place? It is a statement that describes you as a person and as a leader and shows what you stand for in this life. So a leadership stand is just a phrase that will explain everything about you actually. So you can uh, put it in any words you can, but if you're struggling, just start with the words I stand for and then put what you stand for very easy. It's also kind of an exercise and you, if you want you can just try to come up with some words right now. But what is very important about leadership stand is that it should be very clear and very easy to understand for your team members because people actually don't get inspired by something they don't understand. So this phrase should be, you, you can make it really beautiful later but now the goal is to put it in the very clear words, very easy to understand ones. So. Uh, you can do this now or you can do this later. Uh, and this exercise actually contains the second part, which is not individual anymore. But I promised you not to include any not individual exercises, so it may be your homework if you want. And what it, what it looks like. So you come up with your leadership stand and you present it to the other person. And the role of the other person is to challenge your leadership stand, to ask you, clarifying questions, awkward questions, and any other questions for you to have a deeper understanding of what you mean by this leadership stand. Uh, for example, when I first did this exercise, uh, I put my leadership stand, stand something like, I stand for harmony, inside and outside, the balance of it, like blah, 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 I don't really remember how it stated at the time, and I presented it to, um, to the other guy, and he said, you know, Marina, your leadership stand sounds quite inspiring, but could you please clarify, what is the harmony? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then he asked, like, um, how we will ensure that you already achieved harmony? How we will understand that harmony inside and outside is even possible? And other questions like this that make me really think harder on this, think more about what I wanted to say by my leadership stand and so on. Uh, so this exercise is, you know, the very, uh, the fastest feedback you can receive on your leadership stand from other people and the feedback um, to you as a person with this leadership stand. So how people perceive a person who has this kind of leadership stand. Uh, yeah, and 
Now you can say that, oh, yes, sure. Sure. I was just about to share my leadership stand right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have one, just answering the question. So I, um, I can say now that my leadership stand is not uh, maybe the perfect one it should have. You may also ask questions to, to challenge my leadership stand, but uh, for now I stand for happiness. I stand for that happiness that allows you to live and choose because you're happy now, not to become happy one day. Because I bet any of you heard some phrases like, when I get this job, I'll get happy. When I lose weight, I'll get happy. Or when I get married, I'll get And other things like this. But when you hear and when you say something, some phrase like this, you automatically put yourself in a situation of unhappiness in current moment. And I believe that uh, knowing yourself deeply, answering all these questions that I was asking you today, you, can, you will be able to find something that really makes you happy now and enable you to live your life because of the state of happiness. And I'm really sure that it will be more uh, fulfilling, more um, efficient in any parts of your life, in your professional life, in your personal life, because if you choose this job because you are happy, you will be much more performing employee. Or if you choose uh, this, uh, you know, uh, uh, relationships because you are happy, it will, be, it will bring you even more happiness in the end. And so this is what I truly stand for right now, and uh, that is oh, pretty the same situation with leadership. So leadership is not something that you need to work hard all life to deserve to be one one day. It is something you can do all, already today to change other people's lives, because one of the features of a leader is a responsibility, is courage to take responsibility for something bigger than yourself, for the project, for the company, for the team. And once you know yourself very well, you are able to lead others with full transparency. So I wish you to start being a leader today and see what impact you can create uh, tomorrow. So thank you very much, and I'm ready for your questions.